Well, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'd like to first start off my comments by expressing my sincere appreciation to Senator Jane Cordy from Nova Scotia. Senator, welcome. Thank you. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, representing Michigan's 12th District. Congressman Bill Hazinga, representing Michigan's 2nd District. And Mr. Cam Davis, who was appointed by President Barack Obama as the United States Environmental Protection Agency's Great Lake Czar throughout the past many years and has worked with us and many others uh, to ensure the quality of the Great Lakes. To all of you, thank you once again for joining us today and thank you uh, out in the gallery here. I see a few people. Thank you for joining us as well. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 years ago, the Great Lakes were at rock bottom. Decades of pollution made our water unfit to drink or to swim in. Fish were toxic. Lake Erie was declared dead, rivers burned. Society said enough and demanded action. Governments listened. Canada and the United States signed the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement, which set our two nations on a path of heightened cooperation to restore these magnificent treasures. Cooperation and good relations between our two nations is nothing new. We have been at peace for more than 200 years and our cross-border economies are inextricably, inextricably linked. We signed the Boundary Waters Treatment Treaty in 1909 to ensure cooperation over water qu quantity and the Convention on the Great Lakes Fisheries in 1954 to collaborate over our shared fisheries. The Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement of 1972, which we celebrate today, has helped us together achieve a remarkable turnaround from where we were when the lakes were essentially written off. Although the agreement established a binational commitment to restore and maintain the chemical, physical, and biological integrity of the waters of the Great Lakes, the first successes were modest, but nonetheless important. We reversed the over eutrophication of Lake Erie through phosphorus targets that we set together as two nations. That early success gave us the confidence to tackle larger problems like areas of concern, areas so degraded that future use would not be possible without the implementation of a cleanup plan. The latest iteration of the agreement, signed in 2012, goes even further with attention to invasive species, habitat, nutrients, and a myriad of other issues. Since 1972, we have not wavered in our joint approach, really our joint commitment to each other and to the lakes, to stop the hemorrhage, restore what was lost, and prevent the next threat to the lakes from ever happening. This year, we celebrate 50 years of progress toward Great Lakes restoration. We also celebrate the strong bilateral relations our two nations enjoy. I am particularly thrilled to be joined today by two members of the U.S. House of Representatives, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell of Southeastern Michigan, whose district is in the Lake Erie Basin, and Congressman Bill Hazinga of Western Michigan, whose district contains a good stretch of the Lake Michigan shoreline. I've been working particularly hard over the past two years to support the work of the Binational Great Lakes Fishery Commission which leads the way in terms of Great Lakes science and sea lamprey control. Canada, unfortunately, has been behind in its contribution to the Commission, but Budget 2022 has remedied that problem. I note that Ms. Dingle's district houses the Commission's headquarters, and Mr. Hazinga's district contains a satellite office. I also note that both Ms. Mrs. Dingle and Mr. Hazinga are co-chairs of the Congressional Great Lakes Task Force, a task force that is a existed since the early 1990s and demonstrates the value of bipartisanship. Here in Parliament, several MPs, Senators, knew we could do more to drive freshwater policy. As such, we formed the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Task Force in 2020, partially inspired by the success of the U.S. Task Force. The Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Task Force, which is all party in both chambers, will help us focus our attention on legislation and policies aimed at enhancing our focus, and that being Canada's freshwater resources. 
I am also thrilled to have Cameron Davis with us today. Mr. Davis served as President Obama's Great Lakes Czar, charged with implementing the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, a multi-billion dollar effort to direct resources to areas where they are badly needed throughout the Great Lakes. Mr. Davis worked with members on both sides of the aisle, as we do here in Canada today, including Mrs. Dingle and Ms. Mr. Hidzinga. To ensure effective implementation, the initiative continues to this day and is widely credited for tremendous progress toward attaining Great Lakes restoration ob objectives, including many objectives found in the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. Once again, to all of you, thank you for joining all of us today to celebrate the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement, but more importantly, to honour our commitment to bilateral cooperation. So with that, Congresswoman, Congresswoman Dingle, I welcome your remarks. Thank you so much for the um, kind introduction and good morning to everyone. It's great to join you virtually today to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. Thank you to Member of Parliament Badaway for the from the Parliament of Canada for inviting me to join you for this celebration. And thank you to, for the decades of partnership that we all have had in the effort to protect our waters. <clears throat> Thanks to this agreement, the United States and Canada have worked together alongside countless state and provincial governments, hundreds of municipal municipalities and local authorities, First Nations, tribal governments, industry leaders, non-government organizations, and the public to sustain our Great Lakes ecosystems. Before the agreement, our waterways were catching on fire. Fish and other species were threatened, and waterfront communities were contaminated with waste. Now shorelines have been restored, and millions of people have a clean drinking water source. This fall, here in the United States, we also celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act. These protections go hand in hand because we know that pollution doesn't care about borders. It doesn't know what borders are. In Congress, well, I'll continue to work with my colleague, you know, Mr. Abzinga, who I'm delighted to be here with, uh, to, to lead the fight for investments in the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. And I'm proud that we secured a billion dollars in the bipartisan infrastructure law. The GLRI is fundamental to protecting, restoring, and maintaining the Great Lakes ecosystem. And I will continue to ensure that we dedicate funding to protect our most precious natural resources. This anniversary serves as a reminder of all the good that can get done when we work together to protect our life-sustaining resources and an opportunity to recommit to the critical work, that critical work. Five decades ago, this work to clean and protect our waters was widely opposed. People cannot believe that in these days, this day and age, and criticized as overreaching regulation and a barrier to progress. Today, we know just how important clean water is to every single aspect of our lives. Safe and affordable drinking water is essential for our families, communities, and businesses to thrive. I look forward to continuing work, the work that we all have with my colleagues in the U.S. Congress and with our partners in Canada to ensure that the fresh water in the Great Lakes watershed is protected for the 100 million in the region who have chosen to work, raise their family, and enjoy the outdoors here. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman Dingle. Congressman, Congressman Zinga, I welcome you as well, and thank you for being here today. And I open up the floor to you. Well, thanks, Vance, and uh, uh, to, uh, to you and uh, Senator Cordy. They will appreciate the work and the effort that you have put forward on this and to my colleague uh, Debbie Dingle, um, uh, she's right. We are actually two of the four uh, co-chairs, uh, David Joyce, Republican from Ohio and Marcy Kaptur, the Democrat from Ohio. Uh, this is one of the few times uh, if you're at all in that lower 
um, uh, Ontario Peninsula, you'll understand how Michigan and Ohio are cooperating. Uh, that's uh, usually with the football games, we uh, we end up having uh, big, massive arguments. Uh, and Vance was asking before we came on air whether we were Michigan or Michigan State fans, but we we all know we're not Buckeye fans. But uh, but but this is this is the beauty of the Great Lakes, quite honestly. And and Debbie said it very nicely and uh, and uh, much more uh, clearly than uh, than I am, but. Uh, the Great Lakes has become an area of cooperation, uh, both internationally as well as domestically. And it has to be. It needs to be. Uh, and uh, Debbie and I have had this discussion, and, and those of us that serve on the Great Lakes Task Force and deal with uh, Great Lakes issues, whether it's PFAS and invasive species and uh, high water and erosion and all those things, uh, we know we have a big challenge, which is explaining to our colleagues who are not from the Midwest and the Great Lakes region what the importance really is to our both economy and our ecology of, uh, of not just the United States, but of North America uh, because of the international waters that, uh, that we share. And uh, Debbie is uh, Debbie's absolutely right uh, as well as we're celebrating this 50th anniversary. Her husband, John, uh, former member, uh, was uh, was uh, a integral part of that. And he came at it much like I do uh, of looking at conservation as a sportsman uh, and whether it's uh, on the Great Lakes fishing or whether it's in the marshes duck hunting. Uh, we know we have to have a healthy ecosystem, uh, and that, not to mention, obviously, the clean drinking water elements and, and, and how we service and uh, deal with our communities that uh, not just are, are along the lakeshore, but inland as well. And we have to balance that with the economy uh, and the importance that it uh, has to both of our economies. Uh, and Cam will remember this, uh, a little less so under the Obama administration, but the GLRI uh, had some challenges with the with its funding, and we rectified that on a bipartisan basis. The Trump administration, same thing, and we rectified that. In fact, grew the uh, the the budget for that Great Lakes Restoration Initiative because we were able to make the case, and we were able to show empirically that this is a benefit, not just to the environment, uh, which is uh, extremely important, but also to the economy and to the health and safety of our citizens. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that, uh, that Canada, I'm encouraged, I wanna be a cheerleader for this, as Canada's efforts uh, in Vance, you have been uh, leading the way on that uh, as, uh, as you are turning some attention to the Great Lakes area. If I have a, uh, a, a gentle criticism for our, those of us in the United States, we tend to kind of forget about the uh, that ecosystem and the importance once we hit about Niagara Falls area. Uh, we have to we have to look at that uh, St. Lawrence Seaway and and Absolutely. what that uh, continuation means uh, for our efforts on uh, on both sides of the border. So, um, well, as as we've kind of gone over, uh, this is extremely important to both of our countries, uh, economically, ecologically. Uh, this is a great area of partnership. <laughs> we'll continue to do that, and I just applaud uh, your efforts in both Parliament and uh, in, in the Senate uh, with uh, calling attention to that. And Debbie and I and the rest of our task force and those of us that are dealing with it uh, pledge to continue that. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Bill. I really appreciate your comments, uh, as well as the recognition uh, as important as the Great Lakes are, the St. Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Seaway, the River, the Well and Canal are, are all of equal importance in terms of our efforts. And so thank you once again. Mr. Davis, Mr. Cam Davis, a wealth sure. of knowledge of the Great Lakes uh, that you've not only had but still have and the help that you've given both uh, the United States and Canada. Uh, Cam and I continue to work together on a lot of our initiatives, uh, mirroring a lot of what's happening in the States. And uh, it's been uh, very much of a pleasure not only to recognize the impressive work uh, that you have done uh, and continue to do, but also your partnership with Canada to ensure that uh, that we move forward in the same direction that they have in the United States. So with that, uh, Cam, please go ahead. Great. Well, thank you, MP Badaway and Senator Cordy. Thanks so much. Um, really enjoy working with you. And I know all of us on this call are on this call because we realize that the Great Lakes are the lifeblood of our two countries. 
As somebody who helped negotiate the most recent version of the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement between the, between the U.S. and Canada, I think there's another way we can think about, uh, about our relationship and, and the agreement. Uh, really, the U.S. and Canada, it's, it's a marriage. Uh, we both live under the same house called North America. And the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement are our wedding vows, our marriage vows to each other. And uh, I know when my wife and I got married, our vows were not nearly 80 pages like the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement is, but uh, the agreement includes really important vows uh, to the between the two countries. And those vows include cleaning up our toxic hotspot areas of concern. It includes blocking invasive species like Asian carp. It includes reducing and someday eliminating harmful toxic algae blooms that can hurt our communities. And the list goes on and on. These are all the things that the U.S. and Canada have vowed that we will do with one another as part of this very important ma uh, marriage that we have. One of the other vows in the water quality agreement is that the two partners in this marriage called the parties, the U.S. and Canada, they vow to appropriate adequate funds to implement their vows. We can't do much without funding. Funding is an it's an investment in making sure that we're making good on those on those wedding vows. And in the U.S. Uh, here, thanks to the leadership of people like Congresswoman Dingell and Congressman Heisinger, we have the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative to help juice our protection and restoration efforts to bring the Great Lakes back to life and make sure that they are vibrant for the next several generations, if not beyond. Uh, and so we wanna make sure that we continue to remind each other of our vows, much like my wife and I do, mostly she reminds me, uh, that it's important to live up to those, those commitments uh, for the sake of the Great Lakes. And I do wanna close by saying, it's not all just on the shoulders of MP Badaway, Senator Cordy, uh, Congressman Heisinger, Congresswoman Dingle to save the Great Lakes. It's really up to us as individuals uh, to put our shoulder into this work, whether it's part of a beach cleanup or it's part of uh, conservation efforts for wetlands, uh, whether it's uh, being part of a citizen's advisory committee to clean up an area of concern. We all have a role to play. And I, you know, I know I play that role both uh, in a municipal elected official capacity uh, and every day by just educating and teaching my kids about how important it is uh, to think about the world around us as part of us because it's our life support system. And the Great Lakes are our life support system here in this region. So I'm gonna thank the four of you again for your leadership efforts on this. Uh, I know we can't do it without you, and the Great Lakes can't do it without you. Well, thank you, Cam. Uh, words well taken. And uh, once again, I do want to thank you for your continued work, uh, not only in the U.S., but also in partnership with us here in Canada. Before we take questions, let me reiterate to each and every one of you that the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement is the foundation for binational work to grow the economy, protect the environment, and provide safe drinking water to millions of people. I often refer to this as the triple bottom line, our environment, our economy, and our social and cultural aspects of our communities while we enjoy living on the Great Lakes and, of course, the St. Lawrence. Uh, you know, words do motivate, but actions inspire. I said that once at a congressional breakfast a few years ago, and it's so true. And we can talk, and words do, once again, motivate, but, again, action inspires. And I'm pleased to work with Senator Cordy and... Congresswoman Dingo and Congressman Zinga and Cam and many others on both sides of the border to ensure put those actions in place so that way, as Cam said, we inspire others uh, and future generations to ensure that the Great Lakes are well respected and well taken care of. But our job is far from over. While we celebrate the agreement's successes, we also acknowledge that the Great Lakes restoration is actually an ongoing stewardship. This stewardship must always be rooted in bilateral cooperation. Water will always unite us. We want to do more. 
and Parliament is committed to further action to protect and restore the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence. To that end, we will be hosting a Great Lakes Watershed Summit on February 14th, 2023, two months from today, and I cordially invite all of you to participate, as well as our American friends. So with that, I do want to thank you for being here today. Congressman, Congresswoman, Mr. Davis, thank you as well for being with us, and we will now take questions. If you are online and you wish to uh, ask a question, please use the raise hand function to notify us of your questions. If you are online and you desire to ask a question, use the function to raise hand to notify us of your First question is uh, James McCartan with the Canadian Press. Go ahead, James. James, I believe you're on mute. You're still on mute, James. Can you hear us, James? I'm sorry, we don't have audio for James, so this will conclude the press conference. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much.